Yo, you're welcome to Business Daily on Trust TV. I am Chamun Dabeng. Let's talk numbers. We're starting off with the stock market as of 6 a.m. this morning. Welcome back to Business Daily. My name is Chamun Dabeng. All right. So have you ever been in a position where, you know, you go shopping and then the salesperson actually seduces you and pushes you into buying something that you don't even know you actually need it? As a matter of fact, there's every single possibility that you didn't even need it to begin with. But the salesperson pitched that product so well that you felt the need to buy it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the psychology behind sales. Now, this, being able to sell something to a person, it really does take finesse. It's really not that easy for you to persuade people into buying certain things and probably going over their budget. Now, that is a gift. It's a gift of the salesman. Unfortunately, that's not a gift that every single person has. But if you are an entrepreneur, it is vital to the success of your business. And it's very important for you to imbibe and develop that sort of finesse. Well, joining me in the studio today to talk about the psychology behind sales is business development analyst and emotional intelligence coach Nikadi Feboke. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. So you you are an emotional intelligence coach. Not only that, you also have your own personal history with selling yourself as an entrepreneur yourself. Now, what has that experience been like? Uh, but before we get into that, let's start off with who's a salesperson and what is seller's psychology, I believe. Um, yes, the psychology of sales. What does that mean? Huh. A salesperson is that person who is trained, right, to put products out there. And the products are, I'm talking about could be tangible or intangible, mm -hmm. right? But it's products, right? They, they're trained to get those products across to other people, getting their interest to buy these products. Mm -hmm. And they're just in a nutshell, that's what a salesperson is. Yeah, and then um, the psychology of sales. It's not very common here. Yeah, we do it subconsciously, mm -hmm. right? It is, it's not, it's not everybody is deliberate about it, but the psychology of sales is having the, the um, behavioral part of understanding the person on the other side, mm -hmm. pitching to them what they need because of your understanding, selling to them items that they think is real, mm -hmm. that buys from them trust and it very invariably allows you to sell to them. And in many cases, selling things they really don't want or need. I've been in there. <laughs> I mean, for, for, I could give you a practical example. There was this guy who was at, um, who was at, what was it called? He wanted to get numbers. Mm -hmm. So that in this case, he's the, right? Like I said, somewhere intangible, so he was the product, right? Yeah. He wanted to get numbers from women, right? At a mall. So he tried talking to women at a shoe store, mm -hmm. he, he, the response was that he didn't get much out of that. Yeah. He tried talking to women at a food store. Just imagine the mall, like you have your... It didn't, didn't work. work. But, but he, he got, got it. Guess where he got, got his, his highest response? He stood at a flower shop and communicated with women mm -hmm. who came there. This was kind of like a research. Communicated with women who came there and the response was higher. Why? The euphoria of the flowers, so the background left 
tri tri triggered something in the women's mind. That scent of romance. That, oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. That opened their minds to the conversation of love, romance, mm -hmm. and you know, the openness. Right? Just because of the presence of the flower, they were more willing to talk to him and exchange numbers, and the communication worked mm -hmm. well. You know, so that's, that's understanding of using the environment of flowers was the psychology he used to sell to sell himself. Mm -hmm. So it's that understanding. Mm. So when you're around people, there's some other guy who wanted to, yeah, every time he sells to people, he has products in his house, right? And he wants to sell to them. So when he brings people to his house and drives them there, I say, oh, I have, I have stuff in the house. He gives them his house care. I say, oh, would you just go in and wait for me? I forgot something in the car. And they walk in there and he goes back to the car, waits a few minutes. He didn't forget anything. Then he goes back inside. He says, it's, it's, it's actually a false pretense mm -hmm. to catch a person's att attention. So he goes back into the house. And then they start the conversation. And not directly talking about sales, 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 sales. So just talking. Mm -hmm. What he had done, most times he does that, he makes a sale. Why? Because he has sold to that person trust. How many people would give you their house keys and tell them yeah. go inside? Right? So the person... The potential buyer already feels that sense of trust and is willing to listen to what this man has to offer. Because it's a wonder, it's like, why would this person even let me into their house? Exactly. So mm -hmm. you just feel comfortable, you sit down there, and sales is about trust. Mm -hmm. Can I trust you? Can I trust that you're selling the right thing? Have you not seen most times when we go online, most of the things we see, we see them looking so nice, but when they reach us, it's something else. Yes, because it's online, Chinese they, online they try to sell to you something you can trust. They get mm -hmm. your buying through trust. And you trust them. You pay. I mean, you're not saying that you pay. That's trust. Yeah. So. It's much. actually a really huge risk. And that's something that we'll definitely talk about in the, during the course of the show when it comes to selling on social media. Because nowadays, every single person, let me not say every single person, that's a generalization. But we, you know, a, a few percentage. people are starting to develop a distrust towards um, certain uh, pages or pages that they don't understand. And now you have a percentage of people asking for payment on delivery. And then you also have the distrust from the seller's point of view that is saying, no, we cannot do sale, um, sorry, payment on delivery. And at this point, you're basically displeasing your potential customer. So in that case, where do you really find a middle ground when it comes to things like this? Because you have to make a sale. You're not buying these things so that you can keep them at home. You're buying them so other people can buy them from you and they can equally make a profit. Now, in this case, how would that work? Because pleasing your customer is paramount. Yeah, well, pleasing your customer is paramount, and that's why you do There are other things you need to do before you actually go make sales, mm -hmm. right? How you promote yourself, how you brand yourself, how you present yourself to the customer, again, is a thing that, that, um, that generates trust. Now, if um, most people, it's not cast in stone, but it's typically the experience we have in the environment Nigeria so that your sales person doesn't make you not a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And averagely, Nigerians don't trust Nigerians enough to say that, hey, we could do things freely with them. Mm -hmm. You understand? So this is why a particular company started this P-O-D, mm -hmm. pay on delivery. delivery yeah. Because they realized that they could create trust. Hey, if I could give you my goods and have you assess it, and you could see that it's what you want, then pay me. Then you trust me. Mm -hmm. You understand? It was a nutshell. It was, I mean, it was, a, it was a successful strategy that worked. But now people started abusing this, this mm -hmm. thing. Do you understand? There's still a high demand for pay on delivery still, mm -hmm. right? But over the time, there was a period where people couldn't pay with their cards online because they were afraid. Yeah, that they would get robbed. Yeah, and there was a time where ATMs were all over the place. There was a time where POS wasn't all over the place. Mm -hmm. Today, most of these things have made people a little more comfortable that they have the options. So when you find yourself in that position, you need to, again, find the psychology around the people that can make them pay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And one of those things you must do is ensure you have actually have the products you are looking for, the quality of products you're looking for. I have a, a relative of mine who bought shoes from outside the country, a pair of slippers, right? So she was saying, that's a true life story. Mm -hmm. So she said, why do I like buying things from outside countries? Why does she like buying things from outside the country? She tried to explain to me. And then she said that um, there was an incident, incident when she bought a pair of slippers. And she put all her details, the size, the color, what she wanted. 
and it took a while. She was able to track it, and it was delivered to her, only for her to find out that it wasn't exactly her size. It wasn't even too small for her, but it wasn't exactly her size, and she communicated to them. Yeah. So how can I spend this entire while from Nigeria across to the U.S. to get something that is how unprofessional can this be? And the people just responded to her, we would replace it. Mm. And in a fast, they sent it through a courier, a fast, I don't want to call names, so I don't mm -hmm. sell for anybody, right? So a, a, one of the fastest courier services sent that in for half the time that she had, she had initially spent. Mm -hmm. And it came up to her, it was the right size, it was the right color, and an extra. And they need to take back the one that they sent to her. Mm -hmm. They sent her two pairs and left the one she had behind. That's three. That's three. <laughs> Guess what? She gave that slippers to a friend of hers. She now has two pairs in two different colors. Mm -hmm. And she said, subconsciously, when she goes online and wants to buy anything clothes, that she company goes, comes mm -hmm. first. That was just a psychological stunt. Mm -hmm. So she, they, they, what did they sell to her? They sold trust and satisfaction. Yeah. And an apology. There's also customer care involved in all of that because not 100%. listening to the customer is you're going to end up losing them. Which we're doing very badly in this country. Yeah. The big companies, the big commercial banks, the telcos, customer services is they 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 they, they promote, they speak in on, on in their books, customer service comes as the priority. But in actual sense of practice, it is that service is really not there. Have you ever been there? You just see the way people the attitude you have your frontline people. I went to a real estate, uh, um, um, a real estate um, company, and I wanted to deliver a file for one of their clients. And when I got in there, it's a big company in this in this town. And when I got in there, the frontline person, I asked for the person I wanted to see. And the first question she asked me, frontline, do you have an appointment? She was looking at me. She was on her phone. Do you have an appointment? I said the person is expecting me. Could you please notify mm -hmm. the person that I am done here? So that I should please call the person in your office. She wasn't looking at me all this while. Mm -hmm. I should please call the person. I said, what if I don't have the person's number? And when you say you have an appointment, I say, yes, but don't you have a process? Mm -hmm. And she looked at me. And so I called the person. And then I was sitting down there, just looking at this woman. And I said to her, I said that if, if I don't tell you what I want to tell you right now, I will be, do, I will be doing you a dis disservice. You're a frontline person. Your first call should be my attention. should be why I'm here and how quickly you can resolve it. Yeah. Not sitting down and pressing your phone on another person's business time. You know, so this is, these are the kind of things we see. Yeah. But anyway, those are for the bigger corporations. Now, taking a look at smaller businesses out there. I mean, they are the people that are selling crayfish. Mm -hmm. They are the people that are hawking pure water. Mm -hmm. They are the people that are, um, you know, in their little kiosks trying to make a sale every single day. Mm -hmm. You know. But anyway, the pure water case, everybody drinks water. So yeah, <laughs> that kind of sells there. <laughs> Not everybody drinks bad water. True. That's very true. But yes, but either way, you're making sales at different levels. So it's not always, you know, selling multi-billion Naira houses or, you know, um, selling millions worth of uh, um, services. The but then there's also the smaller sellers. Now, the how do they make that sale themselves? Yeah, true. I'm sorry. I almost caught you off. My very rude. <laughs> the principles of sales, mm -hmm. regardless of the organization, regardless of the size of the organization, are the same basic principles. Smile at your customer. Be warm to your customer. Know what your customer wants. Right? Sell to them what they need. Sell them the right product. Right? Have the right product, sell them the right product. And always get feedback from them. Mm -hmm. Create a channel of trust. Create a channel. You see I'm emphasizing on trust. Create a channel of trust create a channel that you that communication is effective where you both understand themselves your mm -hmm. yourselves and also create a channel where um, if there is a dissatisfaction if the resolution happens in quick time real time even the smaller people can do that well hey we're in Nigeria we flaunt these things too. yeah so 
All right, so there's this store that I normally go to to buy all of my makeup things. Now, I'm a pretty basic kind of person when it comes to every other form of makeup. So it's just foundation, it's powder, mm -hmm. and I never ever think of lipstick. But there's this one young lady in that store who noticed that I have a slight obsession with eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. So every single time I step in there and there's something new, she brings it up to me. And then she goes, Auntie, see this. Look at this lipstick. It matches with this. So for me, she was actually able to gauge the things that I like and leverage on that to make me spend more money. So, yeah, by the way, mm -hmm. so <laughs> to like, make so me like, spend so more like, money. You like eyeshadows, but she matches it with lipstick. Exactly, which is something that I never really think about. Cross-selling. Yes. So how do you gauge a person's personality and leverage on that in order to make more of a sale than you would have originally? This is where the skill comes into play. You know, most times we have tools, right? Uh, some, some, we have some gifts, but they are not enhanced. They're just there. It's like giving you a hammer. You know what a hammer is, but you don't know how to use mm -hmm. a hammer. If you're not trained on how to use a hammer, it will just be there. So that applies to the kind of um, inbuilt skills some of us have. Without training, we can't deliver what is required. Mm -hmm. And some people know how to effectively use that skill better than others. And this is why it's you like a natural born thing, but it doesn't mean well, you cannot train well, it into yeah, you. Yeah, the training it is mostly training. Mm -hmm. And this is why that person, such people, are the kind of people you must have an eye for. You who is I run away from her. <laughs> you who is an employee, employer of labor, mm -hmm. you're also a person who can teach a good salesperson. So in, 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 in the reverse thought of it, you're actually looking for a product. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when you have people like that, you train them to be able to identify what this person likes. And most times it's all in the conversation. You know, you have to find that mood to get the person talking. Because if they walk into your store, they're looking for something. Mm -hmm. You don't just get up and, oh, we have this, we have that, and you cloud them mm -hmm. with things they don't need, and then they get all confused, like, oh, what is this? Or you come up with the uh, excitement, high customers come in, and you don't drop that enthusiasm, and mm -hmm. you just go, hey, good afternoon, sir. My name is this, and then you enter the sales. Yeah. Singing like that, it's very irritating. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that most buyers on the other side don't like things like that. So you must find a way to first understand it. what do you want. From what they want, you have to understand your products anyways. Yeah. And many times you go into stores, they don't understand what they sell. That girl who sold to you understands what they sell. Because she understands that lipsticks and Brows, uh, what do you call eyeshadow. it? Eyeshadow. Eyeshadow, <laughs> sorry. I don't use makeup. Sorry. <laughs> so lipsticks and eyeshadow, she knows that they go together. Mm -hmm. So it was an easy sale to pitch to you. She had that understanding. She understood her product and she understood the use of her product and she understood how to apply it to yeah. you. It's, it's, a, it's a simple thing once you understand the process. So it's not really about hounding your customer with a ton of different options. Error. It's about giving them a smaller pool of options. Giving them what is right, or what is closest to what they need, things that work. Mm -hmm. I have a nice, I came, came to buy a nice red top. Oh, madam, have you ever tried this red top? Look at this red top. We have nice red shoes that go with it. And I start imagining how I would look with the red top, and the red shoes, okay? And so I'm making life easy for you, mm -hmm. pairing what you've come for. And I may even understand that you already have a plan for that red top you're coming, but I'm giving you options. Not too many, like you said, mm -hmm. enough for you to say, hey, maybe I should try this, it's not so expensive. Yeah. Like a guy who, well, um, he's a consultant, every time he gives his fee, his fee is $75,000 per month, right? Each, each time he gives that $75,000, he starts by saying, I'm not going to charge you a million dollars. Okay, that's a trick. <laughs> so when he tells you, I'm not I mean, going to charge you a million didn't. dollars, <laughs> you know, ask how much is it, $75,000. So in your subconscious, of course, before you call a guy like that, you can actually afford it. Mm -hmm. But in your subconscious, you're thinking a million dollars is a lot, and this is actually a tiny bit of a million dollars. So the argument about his fee never comes out. Compared to Oga, my money is my money is seven six seven five thousand, and you go up and looking at the figure. Just my, my eyes are fixated on mm -hmm. that figure. You have to learn to take your person's attention away while grabbing them, at the same time, mm -hmm. to focus on what you want to sell. Mm -hmm. So, not every salesperson is actually trained. We sell every day. 
we sell. It's a this is why the psychology part has come in, because it's also in our behavior to sell. What I, we don't even know. I see people, when I see people talking about, uh, you have a job, ah, it's a marketing job. I said, there isn't, I don't know if there's anything called a marketing job. It's probably a sales job, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want to do it. But you sell everything every day. You go for an interview, you're selling yourself. Yeah. Right? You go to the market, you're, you're negotiating. It's a skill needed in sales, right? You understand rules, regulations, policies, government policies, regulations in your office. You understand etiquette, some level of etiquette. All of those things put together make you a salesperson. But when you are a salesperson is when you are articulated to do that for a particular product, I mean that, when that is your profession. So. All right, that's really interesting. I didn't tell you I worked in a bank, right? Oh, I did not know that actually. That's, <laughs> that's, that's um, extra I was worked in a commercial bank. Mm -hmm. And... Well, it's about 10 years ago when I left, so mm -hmm. 10 years. That's interesting. So you've been doing sales pretty much for the longest time. Yeah, I pretty much understand what sales mm -hmm. is. It's mm -hmm. my strength. So what has been your own personal experience within that um, sector <laughs> or one? industry? Bank? Sales. <laughs> yes, the bank itself. Or sales? Well, selling is part of banking, isn't it? <sighs> the marketing department. <laughs> the marketing department. What has been my experience? I was good at what I used to do. Mm. That's well what I did. I never liked failing. But I had to come to understand that f it, failing, in essence, is fantastic. It's one of the best things that can ever happen mm. to you. It's to when you fail, it becomes a problem when you don't learn from when you fail. It is the lessons learned that you must put behind you, put in front of you and behind you, to remind you and to make sure it never happens again. Mm -hmm. Right? But that builds you. My experience was, um, was that <laughs> sales is tough for a person who isn't equipped. So with the right equipment, I mean, back then when I, when I joined the bank, we were made to sell, let me use this, <laughs> we were made to sell fire in hell, water to a well. <laughs> Basically sand to a person that lives in the desert. Sand to a person living mm. in the desert. Because the products we had, were not sellable, but we had to sell them. Imagine coming to the city of Abuja and telling people that you can't open an account with us, right? The minimum opening balance for your account is 250,000 Naira. Hello, civil servants in Abuja. But we had to sell. We had to find a mm -hmm. strategy to sell. And we did. We found how we could sell to people who already had accounts. We had to give them reasons why, we, hey, 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 we are an international bank now. Nigerian banks won't give you what we're giving. You know what? With our ways, you can, we had to find a way. <coughs> and we were hitting the bottom line then, you know. So it was more fun. More sales is every day for me. All right. So when it comes to still dealing with a customer, now there are times where um, you have a customer who walks into your store or walks into your place of business, and it just turns out that that day they happen to be in a foul mood. Hmm. This is a situation that actually happened. I have witnessed it myself while I was also trying to buy certain things or get certain services where people come in and they are already in a bad mood. Now, how do you sell to such a person in a situation where that actually does occur? Don't sell. I mean, don't sell first. The, the, the money. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, you, like you said, it's the psychology. Don't mm -hmm. sell first. They are not in the mood. Madam, how's your day? Hello, sir, how's your day? You have a cup. Would you like to have a cup of coffee? Would you like to have say, can I help you? You'll be warm. You're smiling. Mm -hmm. Smiles take away negative energies. You must not let that energy transfer to you. It's the first thing you must know. So when the person is in a bad mood, don't respond in, with that energy. Also, I, I, I know I don't understand how you're feeling. So if they're talking, don't talk to me, and I'm not interested in saying, so I, I know I don't understand how you're feeling, and I completely apologize for whatever state, you know, but I really want to help you. Could you help me help you by telling me what you need? It's all in the communication. Mm. It's how you relate with them, right? So when you relate with them, they get relaxed because something has pushed them negatively. It's not that they are not people who already have the, uh, what's the word, the, the mental health issue mm -hmm. that makes them short-fused. So they're easily irritated. This is where training also comes into play. I had this customer back then. 
the woman, oh Lord, she would knock down the entire branch. Everybody dodged her and she came every day. So one day, me trying to be a nice guy, saw her attacking one of the customers, one of our um, staff. And I walked up to her and said, Madam, can I resolve your problem? And I let her go on and on and on and on and on and eventually I did resolve her problem. That was when my own problem started. She remember she comes every day. Mm -hmm. She will come to me and give it to me. Whether I was in a good mood or in a bad mood, I have to pretend. Mm -hmm. And she did this to one point. It, it happened so often Then I was a customer service person. Happened to, at one point she just walked up to me and she looked at me, I'm here again. And then I didn't say a word. And I greeted her again. I said, good morning, man. She said, I'm here again. I said, yes, I can see you. She said, I know you're tired of my problem. I said, no, madam, if I don't serve you, who will? <laughs> I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted her to go. But, you know, she got used to that. After a while, when it came to me, she became calmer. So one day, my branch manager came up to me. I just pinched my decision. I said, whenever I see that woman, I don't want another person attending to her. Attend to her. I said, because okay. you understood what she needed. No, because I, I, I not necessarily understood what she needed. I understood how to handle her. Okay, so it's more of a, a toward, towards her personality now. Yes, that was psychology too yes. behind it. So I understood how to handle her to get what she needed or get what she wanted. All right. And Unfortunately, so. that's all the time that we have for today. So to all our entrepreneurs out there trying to make a sale, it doesn't matter how big or small your business is. Um, pardon me, um, psychology when it comes to making a sale is very important. Very and this vital. simply means that you understand who this person is. You're trying to gauge this person's personality in order to make a bigger sale than you would originally, you know, would have made. All right, so like I said, we've come to the end of our show for today, and I'd like to thank my guests in the studio. Thank you so much, Lekadi, for being a part of the show. Yeah, yeah, and to yeah. all our viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Just look us up at Trust TV. you definitely find us. Come back tomorrow for more Business Daily. Once again, my name is Chamunda Beng. Let's talk numbers.